All right, let's do an example using the shell method. So what we have is we have a region that's defined by y equals 5 minus x, y equals 0, and x equals 0. And so that's going to be some sort of triangle. We're going to draw it out. And we want to revolve that around the y-axis. And we want to say, okay, what kind of volume happens when I use this? So to do this problem, the first thing we need to do is construct it. Let's go here, here. So I know that one of my bounding lines is y equals 0, so that's the horizontal line. One of the other bounding lines is x equals 0, that's a vertical line. And then of course y equals 5 minus x. So notice that the y-intercept there is 5. The x-intercept then is going to be, so that's at 0, 5 for the y-intercept and 5, 0 for the x-intercept. So, we have that. So I'm going to use another color slightly to kind of fill this in. So we have that region and we want to use, we want to find the volume we revolve around the y-axis. Now we could do we could do this with a disk method. We could do this with uh, easily, right? We would just have to rewrite this function as a function of y instead of a function of x, and then we could use the washer method or the disk method. That's fine. And if you want to do that to verify, that's great too. But we're interested in figuring out how to do this with the shell method. So recall that the shell method's volume is so we have from a to b. 2 pi x f of x dx. That's our setup. So we need to figure out a few things. We need to figure out what a is, what b is, what f of x is, and then of course we need to integrate that. So it looks like a is 0 and b is 5. Okay, that gives us a starting point here. We can say that the volume then is from 0 to 5. 2 pi x. Now what's f of x? Well it looks like that's our function there, 5 minus x dx. So the way we do this is we just, now we have something that's pretty standard from an antiderivative standpoint. We could pretty easily go through this. So let's do it. We're going to say 5 Right, by multiplying 2 pi x through, I get 10 pi x minus 2 pi x squared. So then I can take the antiderivative of each of these. So hopefully, hopefully that made sense to you, that you're comfortable enough with antiderivatives. That is a squared, that 2 looks pretty terrible. Um, but the other thing you want to recognize is that when x is 0, this whole term disappears. So we only really need to evaluate at the top limit here. So I'm going to plug 5 in. So I get 5 pi times 5 squared minus 2 thirds pi times 5 cubed. Now multiplying this out, I get 125 pi minus... 250 pi over 3. Now, by doing that, we can uh, get a common denominator. That'll be 3. That'll give us 375 pi minus 250 pi all over 3. So 125 thirds pi is going to be your answer. Now, we probably could have figured this out fairly simply. You would, uh, you know, this is a, uh, this is a going to be a right circular cone. So a right circular cone would have a radius of five. It would also have a height of five. So if r is five, h is five. Remember that the volume of a right circular cone is one third pi r squared h, one third pi 
5 squared times 5, 125 thirds pi. So the idea there is we can verify very simply that this matches how we did it with calculus. And the goal, again, the goal is to do this quickly, but we have to kind of do this the slow or the hard way because we're going to get to some functions for which it is not possible to use, you know, just their standard geometric volume equations. So we, we have to take this step so we can get to the more interesting stuff.